Uh, we're back live, and uh, Jim Mars is here with us on location. He was showing me what he bought at the Walmart earlier. They're selling little scissors. Uh, part of the new sacrament in America is that all the feminists chop their husbands' uh, <laughs> testicles off so they learn how to serve the New World Order better. <laughs> no, every reporter has to have one of these so you can clip out clippings, so you keep up with everything. Exactly. And when people say, how do you know that? You go, here, I've got a news clipping. Exactly. It's documented. That was an attempt at lame humor, and I apologize to the family <laughs> audience out there. I'm a little bit out of control. Jim Mars started his career uh, as a crime reporter on the Fort Worth Star-Telegram. He's been covering the JFK assassination forever. And on top of that, uh, he, he, uh, he wrote the book that was uh, used as the primary tome for the hit uh, film uh, JFK with Oliver Stone. And he joins us here at the Lakewood Theater in Dallas, Texas. This way you don't have to drive to Austin to be on the show. That's right. So you're right here with us. And I should be plugging our Dallas affiliate, which I'll do actually in the next segment. You want, uh, to, want me to tell you how many uh, RFID readers and photo cameras I passed coming down I-30? How many? Well, I, I was counting them. There was like about 27 or 28. Yeah, there, but, uh, <laughs> but 20 years ago when you warned people about that, it wasn't going to happen. Oh, oh, I was the conspiracy theorist and nut. Uh, and, of course, world government wasn't going to happen. Now it's all public. <laughs> right. And the very bankers that uh, – international bankers aren't going to get us. That's a conspiracy theory. But now the big mega banks are taking over. Listen, 30 or 40 years ago when I was working, uh, I worked with a guy who was with PR advertising for some big banks, and we used to joke about it. He'd say, listen, when they send you that world bank card, don't take it. You know, <laughs> and, and – now we all have one. Oh, Time Magazine says the bank of the world and authoritarianism, but bankers, these aren't dictators. These are technocratic bankers. They're going to run everything, and they're going to raise your taxes, but they care about you. I don't think so. Oh, but they, but the big bank, big six banks fund eugenics and say they want to kill us. I mean, that's loving. Hey, it's for the earth. They, they were just uncovering a big banking scandal over in England right now, and, and the, the guy got up in the House of Lords and said, you know, this amount of money we're talking about here could actually provide basic health care to every man, woman, child in America for 12 years. That's how much money, folks, no, no. is, is the, flowing the, out of this country. The wealthy West funds the mega corporations' world government. Our tax money isn't just corporate welfare. It's, it's empire welfare. That's right. And we don't even get the booty. No. I mean, even if you were immoral, it's like you're not. You're paying for it. You're not getting anything back. No, they get the booty. We just get the boot. Exactly. <laughs> That'd be a good bumper sticker. Let me bring this up. What is it like for you fighting the New World Order now for thirty plus years? On you know, very prominent all over every History Channel, Discovery Channel, ABC. I mean, you, I mean you're the go-to guy. Half the time I walk around the office, they'll have some History Channel or Discovery Channel show on. There's Jim Mars. <laughs> Um, what is it like for you to go from, oh, that guy that's a conspiracy theorist, to now secret arrest of citizens, military on the streets, license plate reading cameras, world government, but we're right about it all, but still we're bad. I mean, how do you describe that? <laughs> that's exactly right. Well, I've been, I've been kind of on the cutting edge all along because, you know, back in the mid-60s, I said, hey, the Kennedy assassination, that's a big conspiracy. Oh, you're just a nut. And then I said, you know, Vietnam, that, this war, it's going to end badly. Oh, you're just a nut. Hey, I said, Nixon's a crook. He's not going to serve out his term. Now nah, you're just a nut. And so it just goes on and on and on. But, it, no, you, but when you stay ahead of the curve, see, now I try to tell them, hey, they're spraying us with chemtrails, you know. Oh, you're just a nut. Even though the government admits, <laughs> but says it's a secret program. Oh, it's but secret. you're kooky to ask. But there is a program, <laughs> $7 billion a year at least, but don't discuss it. And patents that they no, file. Sure, but, but they don't discuss it, though. But, but no, we don't want to do that. And then, uh, you know, I try to talk about, even, you can even go to 9-11 and there are the, there's the theory that some of those airplanes have been captured, uh, the computer captured remote by, control. by remote control. They don't have drones. Oh, no, no, don't exist. Exist. You can't do that. And now I go to the movies and see ads for the Air Force and they're saying, hey, come join the Air Force. You can sit down there. At Joe Kennedy's weekend. son died in World War II. Uh, in a remote controlled plane. Well, yeah, well, he was in the, the plane behind the big bomber that were going to use as a cruise missile. Yeah, right. remote controlling it. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't exist in 43, though. And that was in 43. In the 1980s, I was interviewing an airline pilot for a big Boeing wide body jet. And he said, you know, my job's just redundant. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, the computer flies the airplane. He said, I'm just there in case the computer breaks. Listen, I want somebody to find this because I saw this live on C-SPAN. And it was a New York City police press conference with this weird uh, soundboard. It's like 
cream colored with holes in it behind them. Everybody knows what I'm talking about if you watch New York press conferences. And George W. Bush, the president, is coming to New York the day after. He's giving his, you know, we're going to get the people to knock these towers down speech. And he gets up and he goes, don't worry. We've got remote control on all the aircraft in the future. We're going to be able to stop them from doing this. And actually, somebody behind him reaches up and jerks on his shirt. And he goes, oh. And, and, but, I mean, I saw this. I know you did because what I have documented is that early in 2001, months before 9-11, the head of British Airways uh, made a talk and said, you know, we don't have to worry about hijacking anymore because we now have the ability to capture the onboard computers and we can guide it into a safe landing regardless of what the crew or the hijackers want. And then and, later and, I found out they actually, on those two aircraft that were used, they have the exact system was in place. Exactly. You know, but of course, that's just conspiracy theory, right? They don't have remote control aircraft. <laughs> well, they, the entire Air Force in eight years is going to be totally drawn, but, you know, it doesn't exist. <laughs> right, but that doesn't exist. Uh, well, it's, it's the difference between people who know things and people who watch television. I think that is the difference. Of course, we make television. You know, right. We don't watch it, but we are on television. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know what I'm talking about. Somebody who comes back from home from work, you know, sits down. No, no, they keep us on the treadmill. Watches CNN. They're on that gerbil. Tr right. We're watches, not bashing Fox. Watches Fox, you know, and then goes to bed, thinks they learned everything. And if they don't see it on CNN or Fox or read it in their local syndicated newspaper, then, you know, it can't be real. Well, Jim. And yet, and yet all I have to do is look around you, see what's going on. Did I, do I understand that now the TSA is starting to set up spot checkpoints in Dallas? Remember me years ago. I, I saw them on C-SPAN. They always tell us nine years ago. They hadn't even made Homeland Security Cabinet yet. It was 2002, early 2002, a few months before they made it an official agency uh, of the Cabinet under executive power. And they said, you're going to have to get TSA to get a job. We're going to be on every street corner, and it's going to be kind of a federal force everywhere. And we're going to train your police. And there'll be threat fusion centers. They had all these corporate leaders there, yes. So I've been telling folks, TSA's coming to your streets. They're now in every major city. And I've seen newscasts where you're driving down the road in Tennessee or Michigan. Right. And they actually grab your wife out and grab her breast on the side of the highway. Okay. It's now, a total act of submission. Now, answer me this, because it's all due to 9-11 and it's all due to the fear of the terrorism, right? Exactly how many terrorists has the TSA caught? They admit Zero. Zero. None. But the None. Dallas Morning News Zip. says, None. thank God they're helping. Forget Tenth Amendment states' rights. They're going to be at all the dart stations now there, and they're going to have to, they're going to have to fill your generals. Well, see, then you can, using that same logic, you could say that uh, they're protecting us from the vampires. Exactly. Have you seen a vampire around lately? No. no. Well, I saw Jan DePolitano. <laughs> well, yeah, but she... We're not sure. She, we're not sure about her. She's so, a dung beetle. So, see, TSA has protected us from vampires. Because we don't see any around. Well, I used to make the joke that, hey, there could be a terrorist in a cornfield in South Dakota, send troops there. And now the government's saying, oh, yes, anywhere. We've got to protect you, so we've got to be everywhere. That's right. Who protects us from them, though? Exactly. Who will watch the watchers? Now, we're going to go to break in a moment, and I want to take some calls, uh, you know, not in this next segment, but the segments after that. What is... Because I never do pre-interviews. You know this, my friend. What is front and center on your radar screen when we come back that Jim Mars is going to have the floor while I hit the latrine? Uh, I'm joking. I'll do that during the break. What is Jim Mars going to be covering? Well, that's a good question. I, I just seem to take questions because there's so much going on, it's hard to pinpoint it. You want to do that? Yeah. I mean, you know, my big thing is uh, if we're really supposed to be so afraid of worldwide well-financed, well-heeled, deadly terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, then the first thing it seems to be that we should be doing is securing the border. And yet you probably saw the news film where they used a car jack jacked up the fence. You know. Stay there. I want to hear about this when we get back. All right, Alex Jones here on the road. Coming to you from Dallas, Texas, where I'm going to premiere a film and give a speech tonight. And I invited Jim over. I'm glad he accepted. Coming up in the next two final segments, we're going to open the phones up for your questions or comments for Jim Mars or other issues you want to raise. The toll-free number to join us is 877-789-ALEX, 877-789-ALEX. If you want to join us, again, 877-789-ALEX here on this live Sunday edition. But, but Jim, during the break, you thought, wow, what do I want to talk about? What is most important on my radar? And you said it was? 
Yeah, the uh, the move to try to get us into a war with Iran. You know, I mean, they've been trying this since the Bush administration. Everybody thought, oh, well, that was. Um, and uh, are we any better off? No, they're pushing for war, too. In fact, uh, let me ask you, Alex, and I know you know this, of all the possible Republican candidates and Democratic candidates out there, who's the only one that says maybe we shouldn't go to war? Well, he's the guy named Ron Paul. Oh, well, sh sh you're not supposed to mention him. He's, he's a non-person. He can't win, even he though he's win. number two or number three in all polls. Yeah, I don't know. Gets 70-plus percent on the military donations, because the military doesn't like him. He gets more donations from the military than any else. Uh, during some of these debates, they're like, how dare you not want war? How dare you hate our troops? The, the of course, they're all supporting. But. The troops got it. In fact, but listen to this. This tells us a lot. He's got the most campaign contributions and support from the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. But wait a minute. According to the campaign numbers, the money coming from the Department of Defense, the Pentagon, zero. Now, doesn't that tell you something? Oh, yeah. I saw those numbers. So the, so the foreign banks that run the our Pentagon, military, yeah. they know he's an American, so he's the enemy. That's right. But isn't it encouraging that the military is awake? They are, and I've, I have recently been talking to some That march happened today. Guys, will you look up what's happening with that D.C. march with the veterans marching? What yes. happened with that? Yes. I'm going to ask the crew to look that up with, with Adam Kokesh. We had him on. I want to cover that. Go ahead. Well, I want to just say this because I, I have a charge for the United States Army. I've served, okay? I've been in the military. In fact, I was in military intelligence, which even then I thought was kind of a dichotomy of terms. But what I want to say is, is that the... The oath of allegiance I took going into the U.S. military was to serve and protect the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign or domestic. Does that mean big foreign megabanks robbing us blind with In fact, to me, the, the, the most serious enemies we have today are domestic. Now, the reason I bring this up, Alex, is because I've also seen the directives that have gone out to military people couched in so many terms, but basically saying you should not participate in any of these demonstrations or any of these marches that could be a violation of the uniform. But Obama, Obama and justice. Bush are allowed to have them ordered out to stand behind them at campaign speeches. Right, right. The point, though, here is that in the military, you were sworn to defend the Constitution of the United States, and you're also told that you do not have to obey an illegal order. Okay? The Constitution says we have freedom of speech. And in the military, as long as it's not security connected, you should have freedom of speech. Yeah, you don't have it. Especially if you're off duty. When you're, yeah, yeah, when so you're, you're on duty, you don't. When you're off, yeah. Yeah, so if you're ordered not to go participate in a. You're still an American just because you're in the military? That's an illegal order. It is? It's an illegal order because it violates the Constitution of the United States and the First Amendment. And your first obligation in the U.S. military is defend the Constitution of the United States. And here's how they try to play that ignorance of the military, not just on saying, as the Navy put out, don't go to this Ron Paul demonstration or you'll be reprimanded. Right. Incredible. When they've always been told. That's an illegal order, by the way, folks. Guys and gals in the military, that's an illegal order. It is. It violates the Constitution, which supersedes any other regulation or law. Marbury versus Madison. They could pass a law saying you can barbecue black children on the White House lawn or whatever, and right. it's, it's, it's illegal. I don't care if you say you have a law. Hitler had laws, but it was pure bull, but, but expanding. All, all those people killed in the Holocaust were done under the color of law. That's right. Judges ruled on it, and they went right on, and it was, it was all there. But, it was but listen, law. black people were slaves in this country and then couldn't own guns under law. And it was the You know law. what? If they said blacks were, weren't human tomorrow and were slaves, I say your law is full of garbage. That's right. Because, and because the, the Constitution points out, this doesn't give you your rights, it points out rights that are there. And people criticize the founders that there was problems up front. It was those ideas that led to the abolition of slavery. That's right. But expanding. Under law, they can't give troops experimental vaccines. But they try to... But they do it all the time. And the troops had to learn, wait, you're not allowed to give me an experimental shot. So what if you say it's an order? The law says you can't do that. Again, they try to keep the troops, like the public, in the dark. But the fact that Ron Paul supporters in the military are 70-plus percent, that's got to scare the system, Jim.
You know, it makes me feel good because I'm hoping that it means 70% of our military, which is there to defend the country, is there to defend me, not the banks, not the multinational corporations. But I'd forgotten that number, the Department of Defense. Zero. And all those big defense contractors, zero. No, they don't want Ron Paul. And by the way, hey, the next time somebody tells you, well, you know, I kind of like what Ron Paul says, but, you know, he, he won't be elected and I don't want to waste my vote. You tell them, listen, jerk, if you'd actually vote for him, and then if all those people who said, well, I like what he says, but he's unelectable, would actually vote for him, he'd probably get elected. Well, that's that mind game that, yeah. that we're going to say who you can vote for. Exactly. And I'll tell you what, and, I, and here's the whole thing. Everyone who's listening to this, you've got to take it on yourself. You can't, you know, you can't just count on Alex to take care of everything. You can't count on me. You can't take, count on anybody. You can only count on yourself. And what do you do? You've got to wake your fellow citizens up. And I don't mean preaching to them because that's not going to do any good. But start asking them questions and just get them to thinking and just say, like, uh, you know, I mentioned, I think, in the last quarter, Say, say, wait a minute, if we're supposed to be so afraid of uh, this international terrorist organization, Al-Qaeda, that is trying to slip weapons of mass destruction into our country and is so evil, then how come they haven't done one solid thing to secure the border? Get them thinking about that. Wait a minute, well, why haven't they? And that's because, let me tell you folks, this is where the New World Order has kind of tripped up themselves. They don't want a secure border. They want open borders so they can flood this country and dilute the population, get us all conflicted, fighting with each other, so that they can push through their agenda. That's the balkanization of Minute Bland. The balkanization of America, absolutely. So they don't want a secure border, and yet they want us all fearful of this international terrorist organization. So wait a minute, you can't have both. If the, if the terror, if terrorist organization is real, then we need to secure the border. And if it's not real, then we can talk about loosening up the border. But there's no discussion of that. We're supposed to believe in these two, you know, totally opposite themes. It's ridiculous. Get people to thinking and ask them about, well, what do you suppose brought down that third tower in New York on 9-11? And I guarantee you, 9 out of 10 of them are going to say, what, what tower? You say, well, the Solomon Brothers building. And they're going to say, what? And then you say, oh, well, you didn't know that another building fell down that afternoon. That's Just search Building 7. Just go get on the Internet. Go search Building 7. Get them to think and start waking people Good up. Good points. More news, phone call straight ahead. Live from Dallas, Texas, here at the Lakewood Theater. I'm Alex Jones, and this is InfoWars.com. Jim Mars is our guest. Jim, you're a best-selling author many times over. Briefly, you weren't asking for a plug, but it's such great writing. Tell folks about a couple of your last books, uh, any new stuff you've got coming out, and tell us about the website before we go to phone calls. Okay. Um, well, for, for those of you who try to talk to your friends and or family and explain what's really going on today, and they go, well, what? How do you know that? Hey, we, I've never heard of that. You can't prove that. Get my book, The Trillion Dollar Conspiracy, a New York Times bestseller, and it tells you what's wrong and why it's wrong and who's behind it, who's to blame, and what you can do about it. And it's fully documented so you can go to the website, you can go to the books, and you can say, here's what's going on. Now, for the ones that really want to get advanced and find out, well, what's the big picture, what it's really all about, then I would suggest reading my book, Rule by Secrecy. Excellent book. There you go. And that will give you the whole nine years. The whole national security state. We've given the ultra-rich the power to operate in total secrecy with unlimited money. Of course they're running wild. Exactly. And if you want to pinpoint who you're like if you left are. your house with a, four or five 11-year-olds <laughs> for a month with, with, with like, or, or teenagers with Jack Daniels and machine guns. <laughs> and tell them, don't get in the booze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you want to find out, really, if you want to really get horrified, then read my New York Times bestseller. The Rise of the Fourth Reich, because that will tell you that uh, how that, we, yes, we defeated the German military in World War II, and we defeated the German nation, but we didn't defeat the Nazis. In fact, at the uh, signing of the surrender papers, that was the German Wehrmacht, the army. 
the Nazis were not even represented there. They never gave up. In fact, the same international banksters that had bankrolled Hitler. The Bilderberg is Nazi. And, exactly. And created the Third Reich. They simply brought them all over here uh, with the help of the CIA. Paperclip. With a paperclip and several other programs. Thousands of them, okay? And rolled them into our military industrial complex. To head programs from NASA to CIA. To mind control, to Everything. pharmaceuticals. Why do you think they're putting uh, fluoride in the drinking water? My Please. son has a children's history book on the Nazis. I think I meant to bring it for the speech tonight. That he was back in the hotel with my wife. God bless her. She's, she's, like got, she's sick or something tonight. I doesn't feel well. But uh, the point is, in there it says the Nazis would tell people. i got to look this up. I've never even seen this. But it was like a mainline big uh, scholastic book. The biggest publisher in the world. Yeah. They said the Nazis would give people shots saying it was a vaccine. It was really to kill them. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you think's going on today? Did you know that about the Nazis? Oh, yeah. I yeah. didn't know that. Tell us briefly when we'll go to calls. Right. Well, they had a program uh, that where they were uh, targeting uh, in the German. It translated to uh, life not worth life <laughs> or not worth living. And they would go for people that they considered defective mentally, physically, whatever. And they would, yeah, they'd inject them, tell them to give them medicine and <laughs> just kill them off. But that's what they're doing to us. Exactly. Except they, see, they, they learned this is a children's book i learn stuff every day well and they said they would say we're giving you a vaccine and kill them and of course when they sent them to the camps and they'd tell them strip off we're going to put you in this little room and we're going to delouse you you know and of course they'd throw in the cyclone b gas you know and and see you you don't kill a lot of people at once by telling them we're going to kill you and they, they're liable to fight back or something so it's always for your good this we're film gonna i'm gonna you. this we're film i'm gonna premiere tonight i've been so busy i just got finished a few days ago i haven't thought up the right name yet for it to describe it but it's all about demo side which is in the universities you're a professor yourself but that the public doesn't know about it and democide is death by government. 260 plus million last century killed by government. Well, uh, you know, if you want to go back to the United States government and go back to the Native Americans and come forward to the Philippine insurrection and then it, it'd be even and it'd just keep going, you know, yeah, we, you know, we've killed more people than uh, than uh, Hitler supposedly did. So uh, I don't know. It's it's really something. People just need to wake up and get to their senses. We're good people. The United States gives more to charity than all the other nations in the but world. But we're gullible. Put together, but we're gullible. And we're naive because we were. We're the good guys. We think we're perfect now. Yeah. And it's just not the case. Uh, let's go to phone calls. You ready? Let's go to Sean in Arizona. You're on the air with Jim Mars live in Dallas, Texas. Thanks, Sean. Uh, thank you, Alex. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Mars. Thanks for everything you've done uh, over the past 50 years pertaining to the JFK conspiracy. But what I have to say today is a comment on the flight um, from Amsterdam to Detroit that uh, that. Uh, that Mr. Hassel from Detroit was on. I, I've been on that flight, and I want to share to you a couple quick facts. First of all, I was over in Germany, and I was told by my German host that uh, when we flew into Amsterdam from, Bre uh, from Bremen, Germany, not to uh, fiddle around with the Dutch authorities. They had the second toughest airport security in the world behind the Israelis, and they did uh, racially profile uh, me and others um, uh, individually. It, it was really something to watch. And one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, consultations on a dais, and then, you, then, they, the, then they cut you loose. And what I witnessed, and this was in May, uh, Memorial Day weekend of 2003, we had an orange alert at the time. Uh, when I was cut loose from the one-to-one one -one, uh, uh, consultation with the Dutch authorities, I went around the corner and every Mideast uh, looking person, and that uh, meaning uh, Pakistanians, East Indians, uh, Sikhs with headdresses, uh, were, had all, were all being searched there. Everyone, there was no exception. Um, everybody, uh, even 80 year old women. Yeah, it was real security. No, no. They had naked body scanners at that airport and brought him through. He didn't even, the U.S. government got him the visa. He didn't have the other passport. And that's what Haskell saw was a guy with high enough authority at the gate, at the secondary check to say, you will put him on. And then the government admits that was their guy that got him on. Oh, of course. But, but, well, wait, 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 wait. I, mean, I mean, is that the point you're getting at? No, wait, Sean, I want to ask you something because it does sound like that was a very stringent security checkpoint. Did they put their hand down your pants? 
This was no, no, uh, completely professional. I mean, completely. no, 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 no. Here, no. here, it's about the put federal their hand government your is your god. So we're gonna have pot bellies grab your child's genitals. Uh, yeah. Here, Every, it's about domination. Everyone who's listening, this put their hand down your pants. This has nothing to do with security. This has everything to do with making the public passive and accepting of just about anything. Yeah, exactly. But, sir, to finish your point, so so what is your point in the huge security you saw compared to what you just heard with Kurt Haskell with the U.S. government demanding they get this guy on the plane? Well, uh, the key is this, Alex, and you've already said it, and what the, America, what the majority of our countrymen don't know, it was, impo it, was, it was impossible for any terrorist to get on the plane uh, uh, without cooperation from our people because the Dutch were so good that they would have never allowed. Uh, that's, that's the whole point here, and I've known it for, for years, ever since it happened. It's on record that after the Israelis, they've got the most, including naked body scanners. L listen, the underwear bomber was brought past all the security. That was later confirmed. Well, Just like it's brought right past it all. Wait, wait, wait. I, I died, uh, two months, uh, one month after that, there were congressional hearings and there were people from the intelligence community who testified to Congress under sworn testimony that the uh, State Department was going to decline this guy a visa. They were he ordered was, to let him in, yeah. And our intelligence services said, no, let him on. See, see, you were driving in. You missed it. I had Haskell on. He said it a month and a half before it was in the news. He saw it happen. Yeah. A and exactly. No, it was on C-SPAN. Yeah, no, they, listen, they run the... Look, they're giving al-Qaeda control of Libya and Syria now. And I mean, you, come on, man. If you go... Uh, if you go back to TSA every, wants to grope my family, it, I can't fly, but because Al Qaeda, but they give them whole countries. And they right. And if you'll go back to every single terrorist big story from the Sears Tower in Chicago uh, all the way down, at the thick of it, at the middle of it, you always find some government informant or some government provocateur. provocateur. The whole thing. The whole thing's a scam. It is. Great call. This is a lot. Thank you, Sean. We've got like 15 more callers here. We're going to come back and each caller one minute on the other side. Final segment, and then Jim's going to give a speech. And Jim's such a sweetheart. He's like, well, I don't want to give too much of a speech. I just want to introduce you. Jim, I'm a fan of you. I want to hear you speak. I want to sit in there with some popcorn. <laughs> We are back live here. We're talking about uh, gardening boxes. What is this system you're talking about? Aero garden. A, I, I need to get one. Yeah, it's a little. You grow your own herbs. You just got a little grow light. You grow. Now wait a minute. They're they're yeah. shutting down the Amish and shutting down people with the uh, lemonade stands. I don't know if you can be trusted with a garden because you know they're starting to restrict them. Oh, well, you have to true. have inspections to make sure there's not drugs because you're true. guilty until proven innocent. That's true. Maybe I better not put any mint in the mint juleps I serve to people. Oh, yeah, don't do that. It hasn't been government approved. <laughs> exactly. Uh, let's race through your calls here. Jeff in Canada, you're on the air. Go ahead. Uh, I just had uh, a quick question for Jim. I'm, uh, you got, it's funny you brought up uh, the, your books. I'm just uh, racing through the end of The Rise of the Fourth Reich, and I wondered if uh, Jim could go over on page 207. He talks about... Otto Scorsenzi, uh, the Nazis, the Egyptian Gestapo, uh, which is known as the Bro uh, Muslim Brotherhood, how it ties to the mm -hmm. CIA director, Alan Dulles, Richard Gellin, um, and uh, how... Oh, yeah, no, no, uh, they run, listen, the Nazis, British intel, our government, they run all the Muslim extremists. Go ahead. Exactly. And that's because they took them over at the end of World War II, because prior to them, the Muslim Brotherhood had been a Nazi-run organization. So, you know, now we got not only fanatical Muslims, but... Well, uh, the Grand hard, Imam well, was, that one was an actual Nazi. Oh, yeah, and, and a big fan of Adolf Hitler. In uh, fact, uh, you know, I had an uncle that served in the army in North Africa, and uh, he said they had as much trouble with the Muslim Brotherhood as they did with the Nazis. I mean, they were fighting us over there, too. See, nobody gets told about the truth of history. We just get these little sound bites. And, uh, but they're the good guys. They're putting them in charge now. Oh, yeah. The TSA goes in your pants because they need to put them in charge. That's right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Making us safe. Safe. Wait a minute. Come on, folks. Freedom has never been safe, clean, All right, great tidy. Paul. Quick 30-second comeback, Jeff. Well, I just wanted to say, if anybody hasn't read Rise of the Fourth Reich, every page is a jaw-dropper, uh, recommended reading to know what, what's really going on. I mean, it's just an incredible work of art. 
Well, and, thank and, you very much. And unfortunately, I've read so many mainline history books where pieces of it are out. I know your book's accurate. Right. That's just incredible. Uh, let's go ahead and go to another call here. Let's talk to Brad in Pennsylvania. You're on the air, Brad. Hey, Alex. Thanks a lot. Jim, uh, you guys are just awesome. It's it's nice to hear you both together. Thank you. Uh, I think you should get get him on the show more often, Alex, because I know you have fun with him. And I lo I'd love to hear you with your dad on there again on the show because that was a great interplay. Your dad's um, – Well, he down. looks just like him. I think it would be his body double. <laughs> Maybe in fact, actually, Jim is my dad. Let's start a new conspiracy theory. We're, we're, me and his dad are going to hire out his bookends. <laughs> Sorry, hey, great. Go Good luck tonight with the show. And I, uh, I'm a Prison Planet TV member. I love to love to see that stuff live. If if you guys could do it, but I'm sure you'll probably replay it. But best of luck to you tonight. Well, it's a technical issue. If I could hire more crew, we could do it. I got skeleton crew, and I'm trying to hire people. Whereas folks are working seven days a week, and I just I was about to do it, but our IT guys would have to stay up there till like 11 tonight. And, and actually, they let me do it, but I can only deal out so much abuse here. But thank you so much. We will get it up there for PrisonPlanet.tv viewers in the next few days. It will be up there for everybody. Uh, let's go to Chad in Georgia. Chad, you're on the air. Yeah, i got a question about uh, vaccines. I've got uh, uh, some friends uh, who were trying to get their you know, kid into school, and they basically said unless their kid had vaccines, that they wouldn't admit him into school. Yeah, that's all a fraud, color of law fraud. There's no law you've got to have vaccines to go to school. Then they lie and say, well, if you're not vaccinated, you'll get the other kids sick. Well, wait, they took all the shots. They're not protected from the shots. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the, the vaccine companies pay the federal government who then pays the schools a certain percentage. In some cases, it's over $1,000. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is all on record to vaccinate. So they lie to you and say it's the law. There's a waiver, but still that's a waiver to policy, not to law. And now they're starting to lie and say it is the law, Jim. Yeah, no, there's no law. But I, I would simply say to your friends, if you truly care about your children's health, and particularly if you care about their education, you might consider homeschooling. Well, I know this. My children have not been vaccinated. They're sick about one-third as much as regular kids once a year. Some other kids are, like, sick every other month. That's right. Uh, I never had a lot of vaccines, and I'm healthy. Everybody, look, look, they admit when you take the flu shot, it doubles your chances of getting the flu shot the next year. That's Canadian right. government admits that. That's right, because any anybody who knows about vaccinations knows that what they're doing is giving you a little bit of what they're trying to prevent. And so, you know, and, and is it something, there's something a fairly high, like 20 percent, like, say, they vaccinate you against chicken pox. You end up getting twenty percent get the chicken pox. No, no, they admit the UN program giving people uh, the polio vaccine is what's actually causing polio worldwide. Oh, absolutely. Now. Well, that gets into a whole different thing, but that's because the polio vaccine was uh, adulterated with uh, cancer semi virus, semen immunization virus. 40. Forty. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, sir. Good points. Appreciate the call. It's total fraud. And again, even if you think vaccines are good, they lie and say it's the law. I mean, come on, they're lying to you. Stop. They, you know. they really are. There's no law. It's just like the, <laughs> here we are almost at tax time, and there is no law that says you have to pay your tax. Speaking of Ron Paul, they always say, how are we going to build a government without the income tax? And a lot of times he's standing in front of the Capitol and he goes, well, we built this Capitol right here behind me without it. We didn't even have an income tax until 1913. And as you know, it was only 1% up until about 1950. Right. It was a temporary war tax during World War II. Let's go to Howard in Connecticut. Howard, you're on the air with Jim Mars. Hi, Jim. Hi, Alex. Um, again, this Howdy. is Eugenics. Hi, sir. Again, your work is great. I've read uh, many of your books. And, Alex, your work is just incomprehensible. It's just unbelievable. Um, thank you for so much you're doing. We're hoping that you come up north here. We're in Connecticut here with We Are Change Connecticut, hoping that you're going to be in the northeast in the future. I, hope I do intend to do a Northeast thing. I mean, I got like over 100 stations I need to visit, uh, but uh, I do intend to uh, try to get up there. That's fantastic. Uh, definitely interested in the blueprint to defeat the New World Order and anything we can do here. We are Change Connecticut. We, you know, we've, we're, uh, we've got your back, sir. And I uh, just wanted to talk about the eugenics. You know, you mentioned all this stuff. There's a company called Reed Elsevier. Are you guys familiar with that company? Reed Elsevier? Reed Elsevier, right. It is a conglomerate that owns you're gonna because we're talking about the homeschooling and the vaccines well guess what this company owns this company owns uh, among other things lexus nexus the data mining for the for basically everything the cia fbi yeah, I know yeah. what that is yeah okay yeah. they also own 
They also own Variety Magazine, 15,000 uh, propaganda magazines. They own Cell and Lancet Magazine. They publish the medical books that are in Okay, all so it's a giant schools. giant holding company like, like Bain owning Clear Channel in the past. What are they up to? Well, they're, they're putting in the books, like hardcore books. My son goes to Catholic school, and his books have Illuminati symbolisms in it. They have mathematical equations, Alex, that they use disinformation in the equation. Like, for example, this is not in the book, but it would be two planes leave Boston traveling at the rate of X amount of miles per hour. How long will it take them to crash into the buildings a after they were hijacked by terrorists? So they're actually using... Yeah, no, it's, got, no, it's right. politically laced. My right. son was playing some game called Brain Pop, a history game, and it was all, do we have total communism or partial communism? Because you play the part of the president in this mm -hmm. game, and it's like, well, the total communism is not good, but the partial communism is like, do we have total taxes or only increase them on the rich? And then it's like, and my son said neither, and I go, well, that's bad policy. We need to raise it. So, yeah, I mean, the, the, the brainwashing is just off the charts. Thank you so much, Howard. It's incredible. It's like, how many shots did Lee Harvey Oswald fire? You know, three, four? Hey, wait a minute. Maybe he didn't fire any at all. They give you false choices. Real fast, Brandon in Idaho, you're on the air. Go ahead, Brandon. Um, I got just a couple points, really. Um, I can definitely speak on behalf of the military trying to train people for uh, against the Constitution and also being uh, basically lab rats because I just got done doing five years active duty. Then they tried to say militia groups are illegal, that you have no rights being in the military. Um, and, you know, getting anthrax shot, you ask them, hey, will this uh, prevent anthrax? They say, nope, if you had anthrax, you would die. Like, then what's the point of the shots? No, no, they admitted that wouldn't... But by the way, that's illegal. We stopped them 10 years ago giving it because it's, quote, experimental. So they just brought it back. Exactly. They're, it's incredible. They get paid by big companies to use you as lab rats. Yep. I, I actually just got diagnosed with... Uh, called Mixoma. It's a tumor in the jawbone that only, I think, at max 6% of the country gets. No, no. And All these rare cancers are exploding in the troops. They're killing you, sir. Yeah. I mean, they're eugenicists. They hate you. I mean, I can't believe this. So they they made you take experimental shots? Oh, big time. And the VA keeps sending me, asked me to get flu shots. I keep, I'm not going to oh get my flu God. shots. Because, <laughs> oh, Folks, they're Nazis. They're, 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 they're the eugenicists who created the Nazis. God bless you. Just warn other troops, warn others. We can't get to Merrill. We're out of time. Jim, we're going to speak tonight. We'll put the video on the web. JimMars.com, InfoWars.com. Thank right. you for watching. God bless you. God bless you. Great job of the crew in Austin. Great job of the crew here and all the folks coming out tonight. What's up with these sorry politicians? Lots of art. When it's showtime, whimpering like little shih tzus. You want big cuts. Ron Paul's been screaming it for years. Budget crisis? No problem. Got a trillion bucks year one. That's trillion with a T. Department of Education? Gone. Interior? Energy? HUD? Commerce? Gone. Later, bureaucrats. That's how Ron Paul rolls. Want to drain the swamp? Ron Paul. Do it. I'm Ron Paul, and I approve this message.